Hello and welcome to my new video. Today will be video about the, my trip to Barcelona. It's a small trip for one week and it's my small summer in winter because I'm in Denmark and here it's almost impossible to shoot any type of film in winter. It's dark and rainy and at the same time I actually prefer to shoot Kodak 200 on ISO 100 as everybody probably knows on this channel and most of the time you can actually spend inside the dark room and printing your work but this opportunity I cannot miss so this is a small description on my trip and this is a little bit unusual video because usually I just shoot a lot of film and never make a subs or some you know horizontal videos on my phone and this time I just want to experiment a little bit more and improve my content on YouTube so if you like this idea just put a like and let's start with my trip and start ball rolling from the first shot from the airport I start my trip in Arcade, I always drink coffee, take a sandwich here and I always pack light and have my camera on my neck. Just in case, this is one of the best spots in Copenhagen airport if you want to drink coffee. And because it's early morning, it was crazy necessary before takeoff. Before flight, I bought three rolls of Kodak 200 because I'm expecting to fly to summer and I always put the film through the x-ray because honestly the amount of x-rays which you get through the scanner because modern scanners have a low dose and in the same time you have almost the same radiation in the air I only have a backpack with me and the camera and this is my normal state of the traveling for any type of distance and any type of time and honestly when I arrived in a hotel and walk around the city in December, you can imagine I was a little bit surprised and shocked that you have a green parrots on the trees and it's almost plus 12, so I don't need my winter jacket anymore. And I prefer to start shooting immediately because the first frame doesn't matter, you just need to keep rolling the film inside your camera. And after the flights, I prefer to also plan my trip through the coffee places because as probably you know I really like them and they also inspire me to take some photos of the place. In comparison in Barcelona coffee a little bit sweet and it's not so strong in terms of caffeine in comparison to Copenhagen. This is Orval coffee place and I think this is one of the best places in Barcelona which is kind of a low-key and not so posh coffee place. So I visited a few times or this week and I really enjoyed the coffee and the atmosphere and that atmosphere changes a little bit so I take a few pictures of this place to my coffee place collection book. In this trip I'm using my exposure meter and nowadays I almost never use the handheld meter and I have actually great consistency over the film and exposure areas on the film if you know how to use the reflective metering. In this trip I'm overexposing everything by one stop and I will develop everything normally. So the plan is to actually make everything looks a little bit sunny because it's directly correlated to my vibe what I'm getting from the city even in December. And what I like, I like to walk around the city and wait for some opportunities for the pictures. And the good point with the like camera, you always can do this. And for some reason, because you're not looking in the screen on the back of the camera, nobody actually noticed that you making photos. And also I think I'm pre-framing the shots with my eye first and later I know already how the 50mm will look like on this shot because for the past three years my Voigtlander f1.2 is preferred lens and I actually enjoy it for most of the situations and I'm used 35mm only if I want to shoot indoors or include myself in a shot. As you can see I already know what I want to frame and what I want to shoot and it's much easier to crop people from the downside there on the frame and get a good picture of the Christmas vibe in the Barcelona. And what I can say, Barcelona is definitely not the safest city in the world, so to walk around with a Leica with expensive lens and with a phone it was a little bit trippy and sometimes I just need to think twice if I want to cover my camera or cover my lens or cover my phone. 
This city is actually famous for small stealings, for example phones and stuff like this, but uh, I cannot say if it's true or not, because I have all my gear with me still, but definitely it was a vibe, especially on the sunsets. Sometimes even in the center you have some sketchy people around you, and at some point after 30,000 steps on my Garmin watch I take a break, eat some protein and unfortunately my legs was already dying so I end up staying somewhere in the middle of nowhere in Barcelona and just take a necessary break for the snacks. In a trip snacks I usually look forward for some protein and it's actually helping with the recovery on the next days but unfortunately my legs as you can see a little bit dying and my white socks became black because it's a little bit actually hot for this type of shoes and it was definitely my mistake. But after this long distance of walking even on the next day my legs was a little bit hurt but okay. Because city is relatively big I used the normal transportation with the subway or with the trams and I always have a camera on my neck and a small bag with a small staff and lenses. And now I want to switch to 35mm and walk around the city in the tight corners and make some pictures on a different lens. Especially in old town I think 50mm a little bit too tight and sometimes you just need to switch it up and make some more interesting frames. And here I walked in the direction of the coffee place, which is called Right Coffee Place, and I think before that it was called Satin's Corner. I definitely can say this is one of the most beautiful in the center of the city specialty coffee places. And because now in my camera I loaded Cinesteel 400D, and you can see on the frames you have halation on the highlights. And on this trip I really like this effect, it actually creates some kind of a summer vibe and especially if you have a trees and some leaves and a sun shining through the trees. I cannot say I really like the performance of the film in terms of gradation of color, but the halation definitely helps with some frames and some atmosphere of the city. Because it was last weeks before the Christmas, it was a crazy amount of people on the central streets and a lot of people in the small corners and I tried to capture a little bit the life of the city and how actually people here get ready to the Christmas and shopping around and enjoying actually for me crazy warm weather in December. Honestly. For this trip I have no plan and I just walked around in different areas where I see I actually can gather some information about, for example if I know some coffee places or anchors or some seasides I will definitely go there and try to make it pictures, but honestly I have zero interest in some classic touristic things. And I randomly found the place with the cacao and it's freshly prepared and it looks a little bit like a coffee specialty place but with the different beans. And it's crazy important to actually have a breaks and sit on a bench and after that just look in the directions where you want to go and what you want to shoot and sometimes it's actually better to just go home and just sit and do nothing because as you probably know it's a lot of visual information a lot of thoughts and it's a lot of things happens in the same time in a new city and your brain is actually sometimes stop working and when I see I have informational overload I honestly stop shooting and you start producing shots which you don't really like or you force to make the photos of that so after this short period I just went home and relax. And finally I end up here close to this cathedral and as you probably know in the Barcelona you cannot go almost anywhere without booking a few days up front and visiting in the visiting hours. So it's definitely not my vibe and I don't want to plan a trip like this. I prefer more free floating and enjoying and actually depends on my legs, on my mood and what I want to photo today. And in this trip I try to use several lenses and I try to switch more to 35mm to actually include myself in the shots. 
and in some shots I really like the results especially with the halation around the highlights especially in the some night time or close to the evening and for me definitely was interesting experience to see the palm trees in December and the proper sunset which is two hours after sunset in Copenhagen it definitely helps with the moods and sometimes you just need to see the sun and you need to see the sunset and make few more interesting pictures. And one of the things what I want to try to actually take the pictures with the 400D seen still on the sunset. And I think in the Bay Area this is one of the beautiful classic shots which you can hunt for. But also, in the same time, it's interesting to see the Christmas market with the palm trees with this weather and I think I can try to collect some Christmas vibe from that, especially with the sinistral halation on top. And definitely it's a strange vibe to hear the green parrots in the palm trees flying over back and forward and create these interesting squeaky noises. And also what I think it's important for traveling as a photographer to have a contrast between the areas which you shoot all the time and sometimes you just need to go out of box and shoot something else. And in a few days I randomly visit some exhibitions of the photographers and some retro photos from end of the 19th century was pretty fun. And what I enjoyed, they actually not really changed the vibe and mood what the people shoot. Only one difference, instead of cars, you have a fancy horses and instead of the luxury things, you have more or less description of wealth and wealth being in the end of the century. For this exhibition, I'm for some reason get for free, I'm not sure why. Probably the guy on the entrance saw my camera and thinks like, yeah, okay, I don't speak English and it probably was the case and he just let me in, so I walked around and see some pictures for free. This was the first part which I took as exhibition. Usually on this type of exhibitions I really miss some understanding of the physical process, chemical process, which cameras the guy used and unfortunately everything was in Spanish, so I had translated some with the Google Translate, but you can see it's a little bit limited and I actually today walk with my running shoes. So it helps a lot. It's not so fancy looking, but as you probably can understand, my legs is already dying, so I switched to the comfort and because I want to walk around and visit few more photo exhibitions. And I enjoyed this place which called Photo Collectania. In this place you can find a lot of interesting photo books, collections, future collections and uh, tickets. I think it's around 6 euros or something like this. So it's pretty cheap for what you can get from this exhibition. What I liked about this one, it's a work with the color. And as you probably know, I'm a color photographer and I enjoy the color on film. And I think in the industry it's such a small amount of work with color and create the same kind of a vibe from the color photos, what you get from the black and white photos, create the contrasts, create the darks and create the color shifts and push the color photos a little bit more than the classic photos. And in the second small hall they have huge amount of different photos and photo books and photo books from this exhibition which you can buy with the different types of color photography and collections of the work which presented in real in this second room. So it's really pleasant atmosphere and I actually get inspired to experiment more with the photos and with the color and sometimes I think I get a little bit strict to not push the boundaries and to not create some extreme artistic choices with my color. But also I'm interested what you think about my latest photos and the photos what you see in this video. So if you like the color or what you particular like about these photos, just put it in the comment below. It's really important, I just want to see your reference and your perception of my photos. And this crazy mixture of pigeons and the parrots just create the vibe of the summer and completely different from the vibe what I see in the Copenhagen every day. And playing table tennis in December outside, it's almost unbelievable in terms of what I see every day in Denmark. So the next film I will load Collective 100 and from there I will start 
expose it as ISO 100 because I really like this effect. But I think over the time, Kodak 200 Gold actually switched a little bit the emulsion or something changed and I cannot get the same colors anymore. This is pain and the beauty of the process in the same time and I think it's just was a batch of the film of Kodak 200 which was developed and actually produced in the Covid times and because at that time in Germany I bought a huge amount of silver cap Kodak 200 it was the sexy same batch and I get as such amazing results with this film so I still miss it a little bit and in the city what I also like to do is just choose location and wait a little bit 2-3 minutes to find the proper shot and try to land it. As you probably noticed, for street photos I prefer to slow down shutter speeds and actually close down the aperture to f8, f11, even f16 and shoot on 1 30th or 1 45th of the second and it really helps to create this kind of a movement pattern. It's not so washed out, but in the same time it's not so sharp and you can see the movement of the people in the frame and sometimes you don't want to see the faces of the people because they distract a little bit from the vibe of the photo. And I really like the movement in the shots. I like to capture the picture which is solid and has solid in terms of composition. But in the same time, I really like how people moves and create these washout pictures in the frames. And it kind of represents that they not static and the nature around not static. But probably buildings are and probably surroundings are. So finally I end up on the beach and really enjoyed the time sitting here and on the one downside I think it's too much immigrants trying to sell stuff even in this December time so it was not so calm as I hoped to be but this interesting December colors of the little bit cold light blue sky blue sea and the yellow sands just this I think you can sit here forever and just look to the sunset and sometimes this is only one thing what you need to inspire your photography and start moving on with your art. In comparison to the Nordic countries after Christmas everything is actually completely closed and you cannot see the people on the streets and it's quite tragic type of picture but here in comparison it's anyway summer and I think it's never ended summer and you can see the people playing volleyball people hang out outside and it's never get cold you just need a small and light jacket and you can walk around in some Christmas market or on just markets and search for the food some of the photographers, especially street ones, I think enjoy photographing people in these settings, but I think for me it's a little bit too crowded and it was a little bit not safe uh, to just walk around as a tourist and look like a tourist. And for me that I have non-conventional camera a little bit, it helps with this description. So probably even people who want to steal something from me, the definitely see I'm actually noticed them before beforehand because I'm also looking around and everybody and the, what people do I don't really look like a tourist I look like a more local photographer which is walk around and make the casual job which I make all the time and sometimes in the tight corners I can find really great pictures and can enjoy the lights and the sunset and even if it's a lot of people on the street you just need to take one corner from there and you will get to a little bit more comfy space and make some compositions and framing especially on the beach and it's not all about the photography it's more about the memory and what you remember with your frames and with your shots. I was really pleased to just sit on a shore, listen for the sound of sea and make some pictures 
and actually put my legs in the water and just sit quietly on the shore. I switched again to 35mm lens with the f2, close down the aperture because it's bright outside and take a few pictures of me and this is why I really like the 35mm lens, especially from the Voigtlander, because you can actually focus closer than the frame lines and the rangefinder metering of the Leica itself. So you can take a pictures of the surrounding and in the same time you can take a pictures of you inside the frame and the surrounding and you can include yourself in the frame and you can include yourself in this setting and create your own memory around you and your life. And in the last day from the Barcelona I actually want to go somewhere else and I choose a selection of city of Vic because somebody told me it will be Victorian's market there and it was quite nice small city but unfortunately the path how to get there was incredibly horrible in terms of the connections so I definitely not a blogger so I usually when something like this happens I get angry and complain too much and I definitely never shoot videos about that and for some reason I think it's not my coping mechanism how to survive in these type of situations. But as an experience before last day and last amazing sunset in Barcelona, I think it was really nice to switch directions and actually see how it can be with a completely different wipe before going back to Copenhagen with a horizontal rain and total darkness outside my plane. So that's it from the notes from the trip. So let's load the film in a drum and go in the dark room and make some development. As you probably know, I'm using Fuji Hunt kits and I really like the results what I'm getting from that. I'm using distilled water and I will prepare freshly chemicals for this batch because it's quite important to make fresh chemicals after the trip and developing more or less critical uh, critical shots and critical films. So let's go to the dark room and start the process. I will prepare new 500mm solutions and before that I will load the film in a drum. One of the best and easiest way to store the film, I store them in the plastic containers to just protect them from the moisture and condensation and also I store them in the plastic bag to remove the dust. I still have one final roll in my camera, which I need to shoot, which will be really hard because it's ISO 100 and I need to do it in a Copenhagen. But I will develop four rolls of film, which is three rolls of Kodak 200 and one roll of the Cinesteel 400D. And I will make new chemicals because I have previous one and I just spilled a little bit of bleach and I just literally don't really have enough of bleach to fill up to the top the four rolls of film. So far I'm really happy with this kit, how it stores and which result it pre-produced even if you open the bottle, because for Fuji Hunt kit you have a lot of storage time, just because the developer is actually free parts and the rest of the components is really easy to mix and your developer doesn't really get spoiled over the time so easily as you have it in a two bottle solution or even in a one bottle concentrate. I especially bought the distilled water for this preparation, so I usually use the only distilled water because of quality of water in Denmark really bad. It's really hard water and usually it's a bad idea to use it for anything which is film related because you will get a lot of problems later with the chemical processes and also with the residue on top of the film. And I even don't want to mention that the water from the tap have a small particles and it's not really healthy if it's embedded inside the gelatin of the film when it's wet. As you probably know Fuji Hunt is a kit for 5 liters and it's much easier to prepare 5 liter kits and from there make a development but I actually never tried to store 5 liter of the solutions because I'm thinking if you mix it up and you use it a little bit rarely 
It will get spoiled much faster, especially if you develop the film and uh, put the solution back. So I just divide it by 10 and prepare from 5 liter ratios to 500 milliliter ratios. It's not so precise in terms of volumes, especially if you dose it several times. As you probably know, this 100 milliliter cylinder, especially plastic ones, they plus minus 2 milliliters. So if you dose three times, your deviation can be quite big. This is actually why I wanna have a budget for proper chemical dosing system in my home lab. And I'm also looking for collaboration with the companies which can provide it and I can create the darkroom specific dosing and mixing, for example, glassware or even dosing and mixing tools. Because honestly, it's also part of the storage and otherwise chemicals get a little bit messed up and you have three, four, five, ten bottles of unknown chemicals and especially in terms of the black and white darkroom you have a lot of developers and it's getting a little bit messy and if you want to dose 1, 2, 5, 10, 15, 20 milliliters it's better if it's repeatable and it's better if you can control it and make it fast. And for the bleach what I also like it's just dilution, it's a concentrate and it's a one part and it's the same for the fixer. This kit, I think, is one of the best uh, in terms of the quality of color what I get. And in terms of preparation, I think it's easiest. Like all the cups, all the bottles, everything looks fine and stored fine. And so I'm thinking if I have more development from the people in my darkroom and I can increase volume of the development and scanning of the color film, I can get even better results because I will use only one shot solution for five rolls of film and I can easily prepare five liter of the solution and just use it once and forget about it and I will never exceed the time limits of the storage of the film developer and the bleach. And I'm for some reason usually thinking that yes, you need a volume to make things a little bit better than you do in the single use or if you do it for your own. This is so interesting fact that sometimes you thinking yes, you actually if you do it in a little bit larger scale, you have much better quality in terms of what you can buy, tools, equipment, scanning equipment, film development equipment, also chemicals used in storage. But in reality, this is not the case if you just give your film to the film lab. It's small amount of film labs, which is actually providing quality at least close to what I'm doing and not even talking about the individual approach to the people. So this is what I'm thinking about the future of the film photography, just the death of the huge film labs and the reborn of the small film labs, which looks like a small, you know, coffee shop, which you can go and get film developed basically in real time. And meanwhile, you can sit and enjoy some drinks and wait for half an hour, one hour, reading the book or the photo book. Meanwhile, your film is developed basically almost in front of your eyes or behind the glass door. I think this is one of the concepts of the darkroom and the film development lab, what I want to see in my future. And the distance between what we have now on the market and what I see is quite huge. And it's also quite huge in terms of the tools what they have. Because most of the tools, for example, Yobo or some different tools for the darkroom, they a little bit outdated, they look ugly, they don't really actually stand the chance of the industrial use and especially aesthetic use in the public space. This is one of the things which I also wanna think about and solve probably in future in the development of the things for my darkroom. Things should be expensive and things should be actually functional. But in the same time, I think for modern film photography, it's more or less the same as for modern audio equipment. Most of the things made for aesthetics, for beauty, 
for clicking buttons for some you know knobs which you can rotate and feel the quality and i think it's also important part of the craft because nowadays you cannot really imagine that it's professional use of the film some people use it but to be honest, if you want to deliver film, it's much harder process and it's only necessary if you see the world like this and if you shoot with the film with the intention that you propagate this art. And it's less about the result and more about the experience. And this is the part what we're missing around our modern darkrooms because most of the stuff it's not this chunky types of photo hats made from metal. Nowadays it's plastic, 3D printed and sometimes it's just low quality and you cannot see it as a modern beautiful tool which you can set it up in your room and actually include this space inside your living especially if you have a beautiful apartment. It's a lot of thoughts and even more actions. And once again, thank you for watching my channel and thank you for watching this video. If you watch it to the end, I hope you really like it and you will support my channel in future with a subscription or with the likes or with a small tips through the coffee or through the YouTube. This year was a little bit hard and I think it's just putting down a lot of pressure because as you probably know I'm not full-time YouTuber I also have a life separately of YouTube and also from the photography and sometimes it's just getting a little bit hard to put the good quality content and just entertain you a little bit more so I hope you still on this channel and supporting and waiting for my new videos and I think I see you in the new year in the next videos thank you for watching and hope to see you soon bye